good evening, everybody. <laughs> I, I, you're usually the, the one who does the Vincent Price-esque openings. I tried. Because this is <laughs> yeah. another Halloween episode of The Cup. Third yes. one we have this season. We've done, the, we've done the Crucible film uh, screenplay. Mm -hmm. We've done uh, Sweeney Todd, which just came out last yep. week. And now here we are for another spooky review because today <laughs> we are covering Doc Watergloom's Here There Be Monsters, created mm. by and starring Eric Wolf as the titular Dr. Pretorius Watergloom. Watergloom, apologies. Yeah. yeah, there he is. You can see him there. It's presented by Eldritch Theater, of course. Who else? And mm -hmm. it's playing at the Red Sandcastle Theater until November 5th. Yeah. So still a little time for people to rush yes. out and see this, but we encourage you to do so. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. And today, of course, I am joined by my co-artistic producer, Mackenzie Horner. Hi, Mac. How hello. Are you doing? Hello. So happy to be back. I think this is what, our third or fourth? Eldritch show you and I have talked about think, together. You know, I seem to always be paired up on these on these episodes. Yeah, yeah. I think I it had it is the third one we're reviewing. We did two weird tales, and we did yeah. uh, Requiem for a Gumshoe. That's right. <laughs> now, now here we are with Doc Weatherglooms. Here yes. are the monsters. The first Doc Weathergloom show we are mm -hmm. reviewing because while we've done other Eldritch shows, Doc Weathergloom is a recurring character that Eric plays. Yes. And this, at least in my case, is the first time seeing one of these shows in particular. I don't think, yeah, we we weren't able to catch the one that yeah. they did last year, but this has been a recurring institution for, I think, like over a decade now. This character yes. is Yes, people seem well, to know him yeah, in the very, audience, his character. Very well road-tested yeah. character that we'll, yeah. we'll get into more detail specifically. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But before we do, I have to ask our favorite icebreaker question. Yes. Mac, what is in your cup today? Well, Ryan, I am drinking some of my Crystal Light, my regular grapefruit tangerine Crystal Light, but I'm drinking from a new mug. It is my, Ooh. I'll put it up here so you can see it. It is my Stratford mug honoring Richard II, and it says, for God's sake, let us, sorry, let me look at it, let us sit on the ground and tell, and tell sad stories of the death of kings. Okay. So I saw that at the at the shop, and I was like, oh, I want that mug. That seems very <laughs> fitting. felt so It felt appropriate for today because there were a lot of sad and spooky stories. Yes, very tragic, very ominous drink mm -hmm. receptacle you have there. Thank you, um, thank you. How about you? As for me, I'm just having a nice cup of Joe, but I have it in yeah. my the cup cup, so that's fun. Love that. Cheers. <laughs> okay, so I, before we get into spoiler town, yes. Mac, do you want us? kick us off with just a brief description of what this show is about. Oh, yes, because normally you do that. So we're swapping well, roles tonight. We're when playing, when we're you're hosting, you. yes, when you're hosting, you toss it to me. If I'm hosting, <laughs> I will toss it to you. Well, let me see how well I can summarize this here. Because there is a lot that went on in this. Hmm. It doesn't have to be a full synopsis, just like a brief, what are people in store for? Got you. Okay. Yeah, so Doc... Weather, glo weather gloom. Mm -hmm. Hard to say. say. It is. It's a fun tongue twister there. So he has returned to us and he is trying throughout the show to sell us his book of monsters. <laughs> oh my God. The book is blending in with your green yeah. screen. That is yeah, Well, because it's a green book. It is a green book. So uh, there you go. And look, there's there. And, and, oh, whoop. yeah. Come on. For, there for those listening to this as a podcast, yes. this is just nonsense. This segment, what what is happening? Yes. But for yes, those, there you go. But that too. is the book. Mm -hmm. It is a field guide because, as the title suggests, here there be monsters, and basically it is Doc Weathergoom going through tales of these creatures, as it were, as you know, appear around Toronto and in, in the North Americas. There was, you know, the red cap pixies. We had, you know. There was like the subway one that lived in the TTC mm -hmm. tunnels. There was the, the uh, suburban Sasquatch. The suburban Sasquatch, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So basically he goes through and tells all these wonderful tales using magic and puppets. And there's one kind of through line story that is all about this one little boy who wants to ride the roller coaster. So he, so he starts doing some dark magic to make himself grow. Ultimately, he chickens out of riding the roller coaster even after he obtains his mat, his few inches he needs to ride the ride, and then on his way home, he's accosted by a red cap pixie, and he has to tell this pixie stories to survive. So that's kind of the story in general. And throughout it, there are fun audience participation, magic tricks in there too. 
I will say this time around, I got to be involved in some yeah, of the magic. You, you were the VIP of Apparently. our particular show. Me and pointy got, ears over there. Yeah, you got picked on more than once. Yes. I don't know. Do yes. you want to save the specifics of that for the spoiler we'll say, zone? Okay. We'll save that for the spoiler I will say it was myself and a younger audience member named Pointy Ears. Who, who, was, yes. who was quite a wonderful smartass, I have to say. And, and to be clear, the, yeah. that child had like fake elf ears. Elf ears I, yes. I think it, it even was like specifically like Legend of Zelda video yeah. game yeah. costume. Um, but just yeah. to be clear that it wasn't like an actual making fun of an ear deformity of a real no, 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 no. Just, no, just no, to no. be clear, you know, yes. the quirks, let's say, yes. you know, he wasn't actually going to make fun of somebody's yeah. actual ears. Although no, he, does, never, never, he does say that one other person in the audience is stupid yeah. looking and yeah, you know, there's a little bit of what we might yeah. call light sexual harassment of the audience yes. which is maybe i don't know something we can talk about more in a moment if sure. we feel like it but overall yes if you're not fond of audience participation yeah. we cannot guarantee that you will yeah. get out of this show unscathed yeah. that's a yes. bit disclaimer that we maybe want yes. to put on this before Fair. we go to spoiler town yes but yes that's kind of what happens in the show in general is it's a lot of fun it's, it's definitely a solid piece ryan what did you think of this yeah, I, I thought general. it was great. You know, in general, it, it's an Eldritch show. They're always yeah. fun. They're always, yeah. you know, Eric is such a dynamic performer. He does mm -hmm. such a good job. We've seen now three different shows of his end. Even though he plays these eccentric characters in all of them, they've all been very different from each other. Yeah. Now, for people who maybe have seen more Doc Wothergloom shows than we have, uh, this will be, you know, old news, this character. But I thought, you know, he did an excellent job. The best I guess recurring joke to even call it a joke feels like an overstatement but the recurring thing throughout this is that he's trying to sell this book very <laughs> I feel like there's we probably will not be the only critics to compare it to the fantastic beasts and where to find them Harry yeah. Potter thing where he has well I mean this, there actually is a basilisk in the book well yeah but in general it's just the idea yeah. that yeah he's a cryptozoologist yeah. he has written a book about all these creatures yeah. and how to protect yourselves from them but Unlike the guy, what's his name? Newt Scamander. I, I, yeah, I'm Newt Scamander. I'm not into Harry Potter. Character. I don't know. I'm surprised I even knew his name. But, uh, I'm but surprised I'm, you did. But unlike what I assume is a benevolent, you know, jaunty character uh, played by Eddie Redmayne in those yeah. probably terrible movies, I assume. Uh, yeah, there were <laughs> Yeah, Doc Weathergloob is like a curmudgeon -y, skeleton faced, uh, um, you know, ridiculous person who's more like, instead of newt scamander think more yeah there's a skeleton face he looks like he's kind of dia de los muertos bounding like yeah c-list character it's from it's also like ringmastery yeah ringmastery very circus like yeah. but yeah he don't think newt scamander think more jay sherman from the critic buy my yeah. book buy my book that's the vibe yeah. that we're going with yes. here because he yeah every single little vignette and puppet thing just comes back to and good thing the characters had my book that you can buy here <laughs> and you actually did buy it as you showed I did. here that you, very, you made very, it very reasonably priced yes very reasonably priced have you been reading it on the toilet like was suggested I have glanced through it just to see some of the creatures that are in there. I mean, you know, the basilisk is one that I recognize from Harry Potter. And I mean, it is described as a half snake, half chicken creature, which I'm like, that's definitely not in Harry Potter. Just full snake in Harry Potter. Also, like the basilisk as a beast precedes yeah. Harry Potter. Like, it does. So. It does. But I think most people in the world will know it for the Chamber of Secrets mm -hmm. nowadays mm -hmm. uh, versus the mythological origins of it. But no, like there's, I mean, like I, I mean, this book is great. It's got illustrations and it's got fun little write-ups on all these creatures. You know, like it, it's just a lot of fun. There you got chupacabras in here, mm -hmm. like, like they got all types of really interesting things. Some things we've already heard about in other shows, like Elder Things. Yeah, there's a uh, lot of know. Lovecraft business yeah. that recurring yeah, they, throughout all of yeah. the Eldritch shows. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So they, so they get into all that, and it's a lot of fun. Like. Clearly, so like you know how kind of like sometimes in movies will have like tie-in character written books. Like I remember when Anchorman was coming up, they had like, somebody write like a Ron Burgundy style book. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah. Same thing there, where like whoever wrote this clearly had a lot of fun coming <laughs> up and writing all these monster descriptions in the book. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah, that's kind of just yeah. my general appraisal. I think it's a lot of fun. If you've liked mm -hmm. other Eldritch shows, this is very much within the same vein. Yes. If you've never seen an Eldritch show before, there's a lot of great mm -hmm. things that I think this would very easily serve as an introduction to the brand. And of course, to the character of Doc Weathergloom, for whom this was an introduction for us when we thought mm -hmm. it was, you know, very, very accessible. Very accessible. There's not like, even if there yeah. are in, in jokes and fan service that maybe other people would appreciate more than us, we didn't feel mm -hmm. like we were at a disadvantage for not coming in with that how about you is there any other kind of general appraisals before we get into the uh, no i mean like once again like th this was our first doc weather gloom show but i thoroughly enjoyed it like I, I can see why this character has you know lasted as long as he has and why audiences feel like coming back to him is because yeah he is like, absolutely he, he is a fun curmudgeon who you know takes the mickey out of the audience and you know that's something that is because i think nowadays in the world people are a little bit more hesitant to be that type of character, just because obviously you don't want to be too aggressive and, you know, <laughs> cause yourself trouble. But no, like, I, I, you know, like Eric just walked that great line of, you know, went just far enough that, you know, he had fun with the audience, but also at the same time, it was like, oh, this character's is a bit of a, you know, piece of work. You know, like he's definitely got some unique salesmanship <laughs> here. But yeah, I never felt uncomfortable, like being called upon or anything like that, like being I, yeah, I, I, feel like, I feel like to single people out and you know the kid loved being called pointy years and kind of riffing with him yeah as well like he was absolutely pointing at his dad or guardian whoever was taking him to the show or, th or them to the show and like so you know it was all that type of fun stuff there and every person who came up was really well involved so i, I would say like don't be afraid to be involved like, usually ryan and i try to avoid being involved but in this case somehow we would it was unavoidable somehow. And, and you so, know, yeah. it's Red Sandcastle. It's a small yeah. house and there's yeah. a lot of instances of audience participation yeah. in the show. So yes. there's a statistical likelihood that if you yeah. go see this, you might get called upon. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, no, I, I see it's a lot of fun. Get on out there. Like, it's a fun, great Halloween themed show. And there were kids. Like, you know, mm -hmm. it's not too adult. Uh, you know, I mean, obviously some of the puppets are behind us are, you know, a, 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 a little Tim Burton-y, a little creepy. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you have kids who may, who may get scared more easily, I would say, you know, just kind of show them some of the images of, of the puppets that, that you may be running into, just how they may know. But, you know, Eric does such a great job with all that. They're so captivating that, mm -hmm. you know, the, the imagery is great. So I would just highly recommend it. So yeah. there we go. That's great. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we did not. We neglected to decide upon a spoiler image for those watching. I would say a spoiler before. top hat. Okay, spoiler top hat it is. so Because right he does now, use the top hat quite a bit. Yes, so before we put up that top hat, I'll remind yes. you all that Doc Weathergloom's Here There Be Monsters by mm -hmm. Eldritch Theatre is playing at the Red Sand Castle Theatre in Leslieville yep. until November 5th, 2023, for those right. watching this in the distant future. So yep. check it out. You will mm -hmm. not be disappointed. And now top hat is on the screen. That's right. Spoilers from here on out. Yes. So... I feel like the best place to start with the spoilers mm -hmm. is because, as we hinted, you were, you know, quite participatory yes. in this one. So yes, I was. Do, do you want to walk us through how you were used and abused by the show? Sure. I'm trying to remember which one came first. Well, there first, were two main instances. Yeah. First was the one where you, the hamsters murdered your family, which out yes, of context that's right. yeah. so would make no case, sense. In that case, <laughs> it was. In that case, that particular trick was a lot of fun because basically it was kind of this mind reading machine mm -hmm. that he has that he brings out and so he gives you a piece of paper that you know looks like this so i'll show that okay you, you kept it. it that's good i did i did mm -hmm. but basically it has all these different things of things that dreams that could be you know well conceived so, very so, common dreams is how very common it. dreams <laughs> keep that very in mind common you, you know list. like seduced by a snake chased by a monster chased by vengeful eggs <laughs> lover possessed by a dead cat eyes growing on ge on genitals yeah and you know course, all the usual dreams that yes, we all have all exactly the time. and then of course hamsters murder family and so then he said so then you're you know sort of you know be telepathically linking and of course the one that stood out to me in my brain was hamsters murder family and somehow he magically knew <laughs> that <laughs> and sure enough on his sheet of paper he had the same answer there so magic magic <laughs> yeah don't know how he did it don't care to know the magic is just embracing in the moment so and that's something that i've fun. consistently loved because there's at least yeah. certainly i forget if there was any like magic tricks of this kind in requiem for a gumshoe but definitely in two weird tales there was a lot of yes. it and yes, we talked about that yeah and i love how 
the tricks are all very simple, but mm-hmm. I legitimately have no idea how he does them. Yep. Like, that's because they're not like blow you away, make a train yeah. disappear yeah. kind of like yeah. magic tricks. But, you know, they're very easy to conceive of things, but I cannot conceive of how he does them. And the, I think yeah. that is just a testament to his sleight of hand and trickery of that yes. he is able to. And something that I, I was thinking of saying pre-spoiler, but I feel like mm-hmm. it's better to say here, is that I kind of feel like this is a magic show first and foremost. Of course. Because so much of the plot is just patterned around setting up the next trick. Yes. But because of the simplicity of the tricks themselves, I feel like it would be hard to sustain the audience for 75 minutes if it was right. just these kinds of tricks. Right. Obviously, magic shows are able to sustain themselves yeah. for a long period of time. But these tricks are kind of simple that I think it would get tiresome mm-hmm. if it was just that. So, like, I don't know if it is a chicken or egg thing. Did he want to do the mag- a magic show and then came up with this as, like, a framing device for it? Or he had the idea for the story and realized mm-hmm. it was a vehicle where he could yeah. pepper in magic tricks? But I, I think mm-hmm. they complement each other so well yes. that the tricks, you know, even though they yeah. are very clearly interjections into yeah. the story, the story does a good job of setting them up. And yes. the story is entertaining enough in its own right that it facilitates that it becomes a welcome yeah. a surprise that, oh, yeah, another trick, as opposed to mm-hmm. like, I'm a magician. Here's a trick and here's a trick yeah. and here's a yes. trick. I, I don't know if you have a similar thought or if anything. Yeah, I mean, like, once again, well, one of these days we'll have to get Eric on for an artist interview. Yeah, um, we should. You know, who knows, right? Maybe you'll host that one. Uh, sure. Yeah, Eric, but I mean, up. just to ask yeah. him about his conception of, of, of his process here, because I imagine that it's a bit, because uh, clearly Eric loves mythological creatures and things like that. He, he has a good affinity for them. So I'm sure he's coming up with ideas and stories to tell and then he also has you know these magic acts that he also is working on so it's like okay well what combines well together and just a bit of like that mix and match system because yeah like yeah the stories were always fun and i mean at some points uh, you know the red pixie's like hold on a minute here that story it had nothing to do with that magic you're just you know stalling for time like mm-hmm. Like, you know, so, so the fact that it's like there's a few characters that I should call out the fact that, you know, yeah. the stories kind of end one way and the kind of the magic takes over mm-hmm. for a bit. And then we go back to the story again there. But like, I, I would say compared to the the what's the one, the, the two strange tales that we did. Yeah, two where we commented tales, yeah. on where we commented in that one that, you know, sometimes the magic acts went a bit longer there. And this one, like this show, the magic acts were quite well paced and mm-hmm. never kind of felt like they dragged the show. They always kind of felt like a good formula that he has that he's at that he's kind of crafted here and i think something i would add to that because you're right we did i forgot that we had commented on that in Mm -hmm. that show in particular but i think what's different about this one is that one was obviously a pair of literary adaptations one by casco one by lovecraft so i think conceptually it is a literary adaptation first and foremost and then mm-hmm. interjecting the magic tricks feels like okay we're taking a break from finding out how gregor samsa became a cockroach and, <laughs> and, now, and now we have a magic trick so but because this show isn't based on any at least well-known literary source yeah. uh, that to my knowledge there's a you know it's very anthology based so mm-hmm. maybe some of the individual yes. vignettes are based on a particular story but right. because there's no recognizable story that, right, I came here to see Kafka or Lovecraft or mm-hmm. Snorri Sturlson as uh, yes. Rick Paper Gumshoe was, it, I think it it allowed itself to be a magic show first mm-hmm. and foremost, whereas the yeah. magic always felt like a bit more of an intrusion into Weird right. Tales. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. And then I'll say that I was part of the other magic trick. Yes, sorry. As well. Return to one, that. Yes, <laughs> yes. So the other magic trick, involved the tale of Edward Mordrake, who is a real historical figure who did have a face growing on the back of his head. And he does get his history right that Edward Mordrake did say that, you know, the face was whispering to him in his head and he ultimately commits suicide because of that. Um, So obviously then you get into the whole idea of everybody has a face, you know, uh, a dark side that grows in the back of one's head. Of course, so all that, of us do. No, exactly, exactly. So really, in this case, we don't all have that. Not just what? me. Uh. What? <laughs> what? 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 Um, so you know, in that case, uh, he called upon a female audience member, had her come up to the front, sit, sit up there, and then it was you know, find the person in the audience. Like, you know, it looks like an evil twin, and sure enough, she chose me. 
commenting on my balding head. Somehow yeah. that was what drew her attention <laughs> to uh, over to my seat. So then it was, you know, come up with the names of the people, and she chose Desdemona as her evil person's name. So basically, he's doing card tricks with this one. So she had the Nine of Clubs, which she says is a very good, wholesome card to pull out. And then she does, and then basically we do it again. And because I was picked, I had to, I had to hit stop. And of course, I get two of the diamonds. And, he's like, and he, of course, says all the things that are horrible. That this is a bad omen, ominous card. Mm-hmm. And then basically, we write our names on either card. And then basically, he then does some other tricks with the deck. And ultimately, what ends up happening is the cards get stuck together. Mm-hmm. in the deck which i have here in my hand and now that i have it in better light i still cannot figure out how he did it yeah like, like it, it is not two thing. cards taped together as no. he insisted it was yeah. not uh, yeah it's impressive okay, okay it is literally like a deck of cards and that is your handwriting it's that is my Desdemo- handwriting. half of desdemona that you have on there that, yeah. yes it's yes. very impressive <laughs> it, it's a trick that i still have not figured out i'm sure there is a solution to it but i have no desire yeah to learn it once you learn it the magic disappears you see the prestige i assume (laughs) it's Uh, such a good movie yeah what so one of my favorite christopher nolan movies yeah agreed also based on a book yeah magic Magic. yeah there we go okay so yeah those were the you know unfortunate instances where you got roped into it was next time ryan has to be involved i I, as i've said in previous uh, reviews of shows with audience participation i'm always very happy when i can just yeah i love shows with audience participation but there's always a trepidation on my part of like uh, i would like to continue watching people participate without getting you know, picked or harassed myself. <laughs> Save it for the actors. If Joe was there, she'd be raising her hand. In oh the front yes, row. very much so. Yes, uh, yeah. So, were, were there other particular tricks or stories or interludes that you thought were um, worth shouting at? I mean, I, I mean, I really enjoyed the puppet one that's behind us. Mm-hmm. That was kind of the creepy woman one, where he ends up with when he has the magic box and he's yes, and... turning it, but it's empty. But you know you know collect stone creatures it was just creepy and, and i mean it was just great the way they did it there but the reveal of the tentacles under the dress mm-hmm. and yeah you know it, you know it was a lot of fun a lot of fun that was a fun fun story there so that was one that definitely stood out to me yeah the puppets once again like he always has amazing puppets yeah i love how bloodshot all of their eyes yes. are even if they're playing like literal children like there's yeah. these puppets have seen some stuff even before we yeah. get to the part of the story where they actually do see some stuff yes like it's yeah it's such a unique aesthetic i think yes. they're they're creepy yet somehow intriguing and beautiful yeah. at the same time yeah right and then like even uh, the other one that was the uh, suburban sasquatch mm-hmm. story because it's the whole thing of the bully and you know bullying this nerd so he so the nerd tries to you know, put a curse on, hex on him but the bully kind of outsmarts him by putting the kick me sign on with, with like the mm-hmm. little sign on it so yeah that was a genuinely good plot twist in like yes. one of these little vignette yes. stories that you don't expect to have that yes. much you know ups and downs in the story yeah. mm-hmm. exactly so you know like every story was fun i would say probably the one that i, I don't i don't want to say weakest but one that maybe didn't quite Hit me the same way was the one all about the TTC guy okay. going, going into the, the labyrinths under there looking for his cat. Mm-hmm. That story didn't quite feel as... And I think that was by design yeah. because that was the one that the red cap fairy said. Like, that's yes. not a story. That's just like an incident or I forget the exact yeah, word exactly, he Yeah, exactly. Yeah, an incident of a guy <laughs> who goes in the trying to try and find his cat. Like, yeah, you know. just finds his cat, gets scared by a monster, and then there was a magic trick. <laughs> like, it, it was the one that... Exactly. So I'm glad that Eric kind yeah. of called that one out. <laughs> yeah, and I don't know if, like, he deliberately underdeveloped that story so yeah. he could make that joke or he realized, yes. I can't think of a good end for this story, so yeah. I'll just kind of hang a lampshade on it and exactly. have a good laugh. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I agree. That's what, fun. What's it up to you? Again, those were other ones. I was going to say the kick me sign one was, I think, a big just because of like the narrative complexity <laughs> yeah. of it. I, I also do quite like the just the framing device of the stories of the boy with the mm. roller coaster. I thought that was compelling. The fairy was an interesting character. One of my favorite magic tricks was kind of the most recurrent yet understated one of how mm. he kept emptying the cap into the jug yeah and, and, and then sudden it looks like there's no more liquid and then suddenly there's more blood that he keeps filling it up and as the indication that the fairy cannot be satiated right um, and i like that wasn't like a big yay round of applause magic trick because it kept coming in so often and wasn't like yeah. the ones that he punctuated the scenes with 
But mm -hmm. I, I have no idea how he did that, much like all the other I tricks. I know. But yeah, it was very impressive. So yeah, I think yeah, the framing device itself was a very interesting way of tying mm -hmm. all this together and still peppering in smaller magic tricks, even amid the more kind of specific yeah. ones that each story builds toward. Yeah. I think the one mild critique that I have of the show, and I hinted at this a little bit in the pre-spoiler, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is there's a bit of like ickiness, I guess, with uh, some of how audience participation, especially with female uh, audience members, mm -hmm. there was kind of what we could call light sexual harassment. And I get that it's part of the character and, you know, he is old and from a different time and possibly an ancient yeah. scale skeleton man. And it's funny because the first time he did it, it, mm -hmm. it felt like an improvisation that right. the, it was during the, the segment that you talked about where your evil twin uh, yes. was kind of uh, indicating the card and he mm -hmm. had her repeat this incantation and she said it and kind of a sort of suggested character voice yeah character voice that kind of had like a sexiness to it and yes. uh, and he kind of paused it like that made me feel funny things yeah can you do it again because <laughs> oh at yeah my... then he's licking the envelopes yeah well. he's licking the envelopes and like can you say it again because at my age i'll you'll you take whatever you can get and like that was funny because it felt <laughs> like an improvisation but right. then he there was kind of a more of those, the envelopes, as you mm -hmm. mentioned, there was another one where a different member of the audience, he said, like, imagine yourself in this field and be naked in your imagination for my entertainment. And <laughs> it just, and that one didn't yeah. feel improvisational. That definitely felt prescribed. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, like, I get it. It suits the character, but, mm -hmm. you know, you don't necessarily want to make your audience uncomfortable in that yeah. way. You can make them uncomfortable because like, ah, mm -hmm. are you going to pick me for participation? But like, I think there it would even be more funny if this weird curmudgeon-y skeleton man was strangely progressive. Like, right. uh, the one, one of the shows that I saw that we reviewed in our Fringe Roundup earlier this year, yeah. Retrograde, uh, as I mentioned at the time, that the, one of the characters in that was someone who we would think of as very conservative, a uh, big fan of Elon Musk, you know, seems like he's, you know, out of lockstep with the zeitgeist. But then right. when another character tells him that they use they, them pronouns, Mm -hmm. this character has no problem just adjusting to that very easily and goes from saying broski to they ski and it's very funny <laughs> because you don't expect this character to be so progressive so i think i don't know i i get where this element comes from in mm -hmm. doc weathergloom's characterizations but i think mm -hmm. and again this is a character that has existed in the theater for a long time not just fictionally as yeah. an ancient skeleton man so maybe these are things that are remnants from a characterization that was conceived a mm -hmm. decade ago but maybe there are ways to evolve this character mm -hmm. into the current decade I, I don't know I, I do you have any thoughts about this i've rambled about it for a little bit yeah i mean look it didn't make me me well, once again i'm a male so yeah and you weren't harassed in this way yourself i, I was not you i mean like, you did have to participate I mean, I, yeah i did participate i was never harassed in quite this way i mean i we say harassed but you know yeah. I don't know if the harass is the right word, but you know, okay, like, sure. singled out. I mean, I, I mean, as a male audience member, I never thought it was too icky because the women seemed to be okay with it. They were kind of playing the game with it. Like they didn't put like, 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 like watching, like watching the, the women in the audience. They never, you know, gave too many signs of uncomfortability. So that's where I went, okay. You know, See? like she, like, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, like the lady who was licking the envelopes, who was my double-faced partner there mm -hmm. like she kind of seemed to be enjoying herself and was having fun with it so I went, okay well if she's having fun with his comments then i'm okay like she didn't seem to be making faces or shifting uncomfortably she seemed to be enjoying her volunteer time on the stage so i, I felt okay mm -hmm. so i don't know I, I don't know if eric watches the audience reactions to see what's going on i assume he does because a lot yeah. of his shtick was in, uh, with the audience co comments and nicknames and things like that are improv because you can't plan them mm -hmm. yeah. so 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 like yeah like, like there's the one guy in 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 our row who he kept calling it stupid because mm -hmm. he asked for talent you know? he called him stupid before he asked for yeah. talent mind you when True. he handed him the paper to write that True. wish True. and then somebody but, asked and, for an apple yeah yeah. <laughs> which so. you know, something you could buy for like 95 cents i give you yeah. magic 
Yeah. Okay. I think I see what you're yeah. saying. Yeah. And I guess, yeah, harass is probably yeah. the wrong word. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sexualized, I guess, is more the probably more mm-hmm. neutral way of describing mm-hmm. what, what I've noticed here. I, ge- I guess the one thing I would say to your response is that, yes, I guess that I get that Eric is very perceptive of his audience yeah. and maybe he would dial it back if he felt that mm-hmm. the audience was not responding to it. But I think that train leaves the station before he has a chance to really gauge that. Right. That he was, you know, fortunate in the situation that we saw it where your, you know, evil twin was very much on board with that and okay with it. And she was having a good time. But then when he, you know, tossed that same energy to another audience member, he Mm -hmm. hasn't interacted with that person yet. And he doesn't know how she will react. And again, I just think, again, it suits the character, but I don't know. Mm if it needed to be there and it kind of puts a little bit of an asterisk on what I think is otherwise a rollicking good time from beginning to yeah. end, at least for yeah. me and possibly for others who might, yeah. you know, not like being sexualized in that way. True. Fair, 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 fair. I mean, yeah, like I'd be very interested. I mean, if Jill went, what well, like kind of what her opinion would be mm-hmm. of that. Cause once again, we are two, ma- two males, mm-hmm. two, 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 two male identifying people. So, you know, our perspectives are limited to what we can kind of. Yeah. And everybody's individual yeah. perspective would be limited. Exactly. One female who is cool with it cannot yeah. tell another female that yeah. they should also be cool with it. If that makes sense. Yeah, exactly. That's, that, that's yeah. exactly it too. So, mm-hmm. you know, so I, I think with that, it's one of those things where it's like going to be up to the discretion of yeah. people about how they feel. So, but yeah, and, I mean, like just go in knowing Eric's going to be very active and, Kind of a kind of a bit curmudgeon-y, smarmy, de, deus morta, ukulele playing. Yeah, banjo just, ukulele, which I've sorry, never banjo, seen. Banjo, well, yeah, no, it, it, it was like the size of ukulele, but it looked more like yeah. a banjo than a guitar. I've never seen an instrument like that before, yeah. but it was really fun. Yeah. Yeah, and agree. And like we've, I guess, alluded to this before that, Eric, if you do want to, you know, be interviewed on the cup, we'd love to have you. Yeah. We can talk about this and we'd love to hear your perspective if you have thoughts on this. And, yeah. You know, you've been doing character for a while. We, understand where this comes from this isn't meant to harangue yeah. you let alone cancel you this is just something that yeah. you know at least we want to know more way about this otherwise great show but yeah yeah we want to know more because it's fascinating mm-hmm. okay any last thoughts i feel like we've covered a lot i think we've covered quite a bit there i'm okay if we leave it there and send the people out to go see it because we don't want to spoil it all Okay, yes. And because there is so much improvisation, I don't think we could yeah. spoil it all. And because yeah. we don't know how the magic tricks are done, you too will be amazed when you see them. Yeah. So, but yeah, so once again, Doc Weatherglooms Here There Be Monsters is playing at the Red Sand Castle Theater until mm-hmm. November 5th. Right. Check it out. There's still a few days left for you to really get out there and see it. We encourage you to do so and yes. see other Eldritch shows. There's plenty of others coming up in the season. Yes, see, a, see other Doc Weathergloom specific shows as he returns year after year, because as yes. we've now been introduced to him, he is a very, a very good time. I love, I, I was going to mention this earlier, but then we got sidetracked on the point. The, my favorite thing about him is that when he introduces a spooky concept, mm-hmm. he follows it with like this, this kind of <laughs> him trying to, Yes. entice us to scream yes. by doing a faux yes. scream after yes. like this is the scary part everyone you see you yes. see it's great he's such a good performer this is such yeah. a fun oh character. and i mean one person we did not shed it but we should is our wonderful usherette mm-hmm. who welcomes us in, in her fishnet yeah. stockings there and her wonderful sells Brooklyn, the- new york accent mm-hmm. she sells all of doc weatherbloom's Mer- merch <laughs> potions wands mm-hmm. you know guides yeah, feel guys, things like that. She is a wonderful addition to the show. I've never seen her in any of his other shows. There, I, I don't think, I'm not mm-hmm. sure, but she was. She, she's a wonderful, welcoming presence and sets the mood for this as well. So. Yeah, indeed. Shout out to our wonderful usherette. Mm-hmm. Indeed. Yeah. Okay, so that brings right. us an end to this review. Mac, where can people find and follow you? Well, they can find follow me at Mackenzie Horner all social media platforms. You can follow my musical antics over at Before the Dummy to Musical Podcast. I can now officially say, after alluding and holding it back for a while, Ryan, our Gallivant miniseries is coming out because we are halfway through <laughs> season five. We are prepping for the last seven episodes of the fifth season. So we have a kind of a window open right now to kind of release the episodes. So we are nice. moving them through. Great. Yeah, that was a fun time. It was, it was. And we'll we'll have to get back to doing season two. 
Yes, so we'll point. release season one and then see yeah. if there's demand for season two, I suppose. Oh, there's always demand. Right? There's, there's always demand. demand. People love Gallivant, a That's short-lived right. ABC series from I mean, the it early 2010s. Following now. <laughs> That's good. It, it, As it should. It, it's it has great a strong cult following and people going, why didn't I know about this before? <laughs> nice. Okay, yes, cool. so there you go. Ryan, how about you? Where do people find follow you? As always, no need to follow me personally. If you like me and my theater thoughts, mm-hmm. they all tend to live on Cup of Hemlock Theater. That's the show you're watching right now, the Cup, right. Cup of Hemlock. So it's mm-hmm. at COH Theater on Facebook, Twitter, mm-hmm. not going to call it the other thing, and Instagram. Yeah. Or Cup of Hemlock Theater on YouTube, the Cup of Hemlock right. Theater podcast on all the podcast places. You're yeah. watching this on one of those. Like, share, subscribe, yeah. do all the stuff. Love that. Great. All Great. right. Well, what do you this say, has been Ryan? a yeah, it's we, been a fun Halloween there? season. We've covered Woo! some great shows. Here's yes. to November. Here's to November. I mean, we, Ryan, we got to think about what other pro shots that we're going to cover next Halloween because we mm. ticked off a few of the big ones. Who knows? Maybe we'll do Phantom. Since maybe that, since, maybe. Since that is a Halloween gossip <laughs> one. Who knows? We'll figure it out. There <laughs> we go. Got, we've right. got a year to figure it out. It's true. We got time. We got time. <laughs> All right, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. See you on the next episode.